Hey, lemon squeezies. Uh, so, Pinky and I are coming through today to do her three-month update. Uh, she kind of dozed off while I was setting up for this video, but she's starting to move around a little bit. Pink, are you going to wake up? <laughs> are you going to wake up? She's like, get that darn camera out of my face. Oh, no. Oh, goodness gracious. What's wrong? Sounds like she probably has to burp or something. Um. Oh, goodness. Are you awake, sweet cheeks? Are you trying to make dirty dirty? I wanted her to wake up, but now she's awake. I might not be able to record a video. Oh, hold on, guys. Oh, my goodness, my baby. Are you okay? Yeah. Okay. I think we're good. Are we good? Are we good? Say I'm good. <laughs> okay, so um, Pinky's three months old now. She's not going to let me talk. I love you, Pink. Silly baby. Okay, so um, one more time. She's three months old now. And um, she's starting to become a lot more active. Um, she's cooing a lot. Um, she sings. Uh, she goes, it's so sweet. Um, she scratches. I have to keep her nails clipped because she will scratch. Um, she's doing a lot of reaching and grasping now. Her hands are a lot more open. Um, she's punching, which is not very nice. She does that a lot when she gets frustrated. If my milk doesn't let down fast enough, uh, she'll punch me in the boob. Um, she does like this little fist pump thing and like if she's talking to you she'll kind of like put her hands up by her face and go like this while she's talking it's so funny um, and she's just recently started using her rattles like she's starting to play with toys now um, and teething rings and stuff like that um, she's also kicking if she gets upset she'll like kick her little feet like stomp so funny um, and she may possibly be teething or getting close to teething. Um, we have to put a bib on her now. She drools through everything. She'll completely soak through her shirts and things like that. So we definitely have to keep a bib on her now. Um, uh, let me see what else. She, uh, has come up with a name for breastfeeding. If she says Anna. That means she's hungry. At first, it sounded like she was saying no, like, like no, 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 no. But it's very clear now. And the that means that's her asking for milk. Uh, and if she says it too many times and I don't respond, she will throw a real hissy fit. Um, and I was just talking to one of my friends yesterday, and she said her daughter calls her breast milk boo. So at least I'm, I know I'm not crazy. Um, her belly button is a lot better now. Um, I had talked to you guys about that before in the past, where her, uh, it looks like my eyes are closed. It's like hard to look at the camera and not at the screen. And that pretty little baby. But, um, her belly button was pretty bad. She had, um, a pretty big, uh, Audi. And, um, I had talked to my doctor about putting the silver dollar over it and he was like it's really not going to do much but if you feel more comfortable doing that go ahead and do it um, so we've been doing that since she was probably about a month old um, and it used to be when you took it off her belly button would be down for like 15 minutes and then it would start to poke out again um, but now I've taken her um, coin off and it's been about three days and it still hasn't started to poke out at all um, so it's looking like it's doing a lot better which I'm happy about because I really didn't want her to have to have surgery to repair that uh, later in life. So, um, let's see. 
Um, we also got her ears pierced. It's been about two weeks since we got her ears pierced and she did really well. She cried, of course, but it wasn't as bad as we thought it was going to be. I think, um, I'm sorry, my phone's on the charger and she's sitting on the cord. Um, but um, it wasn't as bad for her as we thought it was going to be, but it was pretty p bad for Pop and I. Both of us were very nervous. Um, Pop was like ready to leave us in the store. Like she started sweating and everything like it was bad. Um, but we made it through that. Um, and she cried, but it was a delayed cry. She just kind of sat there and looked around for a second and then she cried. Um, but um, I went ahead and gave her some breast milk as soon as she started crying. And by the time we made it to the car, she was fine. She slept the whole way home. Um, and... Uh, I just put mittens on her hands to keep her from touching or trying to pull them or anything like that, which she never tried to do, but just in case. Um, and just keeping them really clean and stuff, using the solution that they gave me. But I also talked to a really good friend of mine who suggested using um, peroxide instead, uh, my friend Furby. So if you're watching, hey Furbs. Um, so I use the peroxide instead because it'll like bubble and get down in there real good. Um, and that seems to be working a little bit better than the solution, which is, like, basically water. Um, she used to have hair on her ears, like, pretty thick hair on her ears, like, on this part of her ears. Um, and that's pretty much gone now. Um, she looked like a little baby monkey when she was first born, so, uh, that's now gone. Um, and she has her toenails painted, they're hot pink. If you guys are friends with me on Facebook or Instagram, you know that already. But everybody gets a kick out of it. Like whenever they take their socks off or if she has one of her little sandals and they see her little hot pink toes, people would just think that is so funny because her toenails are so tiny. Um, lately, she has been sleeping in the bed with us again. Um, and I do feel bad about that. It's never really been my goal to have her sleeping in the bed with us. But it's kind of a hard habit to break, especially with me uh, breastfeeding. So she goes back and forth between sleeping in her own bed and sleeping in the bed with us. Um, but as of like the last month, she's been sleeping in our bed on a pretty consistent basis. Um, but she wakes up super happy in the morning. She sings and laughs and, and just screams and just has such a good time in the morning. So she's a very happy baby. Um, and since the last time I talked to you guys, um, she has a sibling that has been born. Um, and I'm very respectful of the relationship that I have uh, with her siblings' parents. So I'm not really sure what level of uh, information they're okay with me sharing. So I'm kind of private about it. I haven't really said anything. But just to know that she has a sibling is very, very exciting for me. They look just alike to me. They look like twins. Um, and I want to ask a lot of questions and set up, you know, play dates and you know send Christmas gifts and stuff like that but I'm kind of um, not I wouldn't say reluctant but I, I'm just I just really want to be patient with this relationship um, and I just kind of want it to blossom on its own I don't want to feel like I'm forcing it or anything like that and I want to make sure that um, the sibling parents are comfortable with that level of uh, communication and correspondence and stuff like that before just assuming that's what they want um, so if you guys are watching, shout out to you guys. Um, but I'm very excited about the fact that, um, there is a sibling now. Um, and, uh, you guys know that I've always been pretty straightforward. I don't really like to keep anything from my, uh, my subbies or anything like that. I've always been pretty keep it real with you guys. So, um, things haven't been very easy lately. Um, but I'm still standing. Um, it's been hard finding a balance with me being a stay-at-home mom now. Um, I've always pretty much been a career girl, uh, been the main breadwinner in our family um, since moving to New Orleans, and um, always really been very independent, taking care of myself and stuff like that. So it's been kind of hard to find a balance with that. Um, Pops kind of had some um, like some employment issues. Um, and that all started about six weeks before my due date, which turned out to be three weeks before she was actually born. Um, there's been some employment issues and things like that. And um, we've since had to move out of our apartment. 
So we're now living um, with the in-laws, um, which I've always referred to as Pop's parents before in the past, but they're my parents as well. So um, even though we're not married, I do refer to them as the in-laws. Um, and um, that actually is a godsend. Um, it's a lot better than anybody could have ever imagined it being. Um, not only do I have a lot of extra help, like, you know, with the baby, but, um, you know, meals are prepared and stuff like that. But um, financially, it's going to be a bigger, a better move for us as well. Um, we'll have more resources to be able to save and possibly get a better car and um, be able to travel home to Ohio and things like that without it being such a financial strain for us. So, um my life isn't perfect. I've never been the type of person to portray anything like that. Um, and then like now, as soon as we decided to move out of our apartment, or actually it wasn't even an apartment, it was a two bedroom house, but um, a small two bedroom house nonetheless, but it was ours. Um, but since moving out, um, Papa has gotten a very good job, which is like a career type job with benefits and paid leave and vacation time and all that kind of stuff. But it just wasn't in enough time for us to be able to recover uh, financially in time, you know, um, and we struggled so, so bad for so long um, that it was just like time to relax. So this has been a good move for us. Um, my phone has been off for a while. Uh, which I'm fine with that. It was kind of hard at first just because I'm used to having that constant connection with the world. Um, but it's cool. Uh, but it should be back on soon. But, you know, that's not something that I was very happy about at first. Um, we've been using cloth diapers um, and breastfeeding, which helps out a lot financially. But I've also been uh, using cloth wipes recently. Um, which I didn't even have to purchase. I made those myself from the receiving blankets that they give you in the hospital. Um, I cut a receiving blanket up into about 24 pieces and that material is very absorbent. It works really well, but it's still soft enough where it's not like harsh on her behind or anything like that. Um, and I cut them like basically into squares that are about the size of my hand. So it's a nice size. And that was the problem that I was having with wipes is that sometimes they would tear um, and I don't have to worry about that with these at all. And I've also made my own uh, wipe solution. Um, I have like a little small. I've actually got it right here. Let's see if I can reach it without waking her up. Let's see. Just a small spray bottle. And um, what I use in it is just. Oh no. Oh no. Um, I just use warm water and some baby wash and a couple drops of baby oil and it leaves her, her booty skin really really soft um, and it smells really good too so uh, we use that um, my wash routine for my cloth diapers and wipes I wash them all together um, but they uh, are washed every other day um, and I was doing them at first at night but now I do them in the morning just because it's a more convenient time for us um, but I usually do a rinse cycle on cold and then do a full wash cycle on hot, uh, with no soap and then, um, a full wash, wash cycle with soap. And we've been using the all free and clear, um, and that seems to work for us. And I've committed the cardinal sin of, uh, cloth diapering. I do bleach my, um, my cloth diapers, um. But I don't use very much. Um, I was kind of starting to have a problem with um, like a funky smell um, in them. So I use just a very small amount. And they come out very bright. They smell good. And um, I haven't had any problems. Um, I don't use them every wash cycle. I do it maybe every fifth time that I wash them or so. Just to cut down on that, that funky smell. And it's not even really like a poopy smell. It's more like of a pea smell. Um... So I know a lot of people don't suggest that, but that's what works for us. Um, breastfeeding is still going well. Um, I still haven't had an AF cycle at all. So it's been a year since I've seen AF, and that helpful can stay where she's at as far as I'm concerned. Um, I've recently started couponing again. There for a while I couldn't afford it um, because I was clipping coupons that I wasn't even going to have money to spend on or with anyway. Um, so I had stopped doing that for a while, but I just started doing that again. 
Um, and I just did my first coupon transaction in a couple of months, uh, day before yesterday. I got a 20 pack of razors for 27 cents. Uh, so I, it felt good to have that old rush back. Um, sorry, my tank top's a little dingy, so I don't want you guys to see that. Uh, it's one of those older tank tops that's just so comfortable you can't really seem to get rid of, but it's a little on the dingy side. Um, but I don't have to pay for my paper anymore. Um, Pop's parents, or my in-laws, they actually have the uh, Sunday paper delivered on Sundays now. So I basically get free coupons. And then there's a couple family members who get the paper that know I coupon now. And they uh, collect coupons for me as well. Um, so I'm looking forward to starting my stockpile back up again. Because that's another thing with um, us having financial issues with me having that stockpile. We didn't have to buy body wash or toothpaste or anything the whole time that I was pregnant. So um, I stopped working when I was about four months pregnant and um, didn't buy anything after that. And we still have about five bottles of body wash left over from that and um, just all kinds of stuff. And it made it a lot easier that even though we were financially struggling, we weren't going without anything that we really needed. Um, so stockpiling is an awesome, awesome plan because you never know your life could change at any moment. Um, um, I'm starting to get back to my old self again. I was able to go get my eyebrows done again for the first time in a while. Um, I mean, I painted my toenails and my fingernails. Um, Pop and I went on our first date night the other night. Um, and leaving the baby was a big step for me. That was my first time leaving the baby. Um, I didn't like it really I almost cried when it was time to leave I almost cried about three times while we were out I teared up really bad um but it was fun to get out and have a good time and you know hang out with other people my age but leaving her was a really big step for me um let's see what else um just little like things that I've noticed that are helpful for me um that I just wanted to share with you guys velcro in the washer is the devil um, so like now since she's been wearing a lot of bibs and stuff like that, a lot of them close with Velcro. Um, so a little tip is when you wash them, make sure to close the Velcro because it'll stick to other things and it ruins them. Like some of her little socks, the Velcro have got stuck to the socks when you pull it off, it frays them and stuff like that. So if at all possible, try to close the Velcro, um, uh, before doing a load of laundry, uh, of baby clothes. Um. Also, like when we go around family and there are guys around, I'm not a very private person, so I don't mind breastfeeding around other women. But when there are men around, um, you want to cover up. And I haven't been able to afford a like a hooter hide or anything like that yet. I plan on getting one here in the near future. Um, but what I use is a receiving blanket. And when I do, I throw it over my shoulder and like tuck the tail of it into my bra strap. And that keeps the baby from being able to pull the blanket down and expose us to everyone, uh, which she's starting to do now that she's grabbing and stuff like that. Um, also, when I prep my diapers, um, when I get them all ready um, to put away, I put a cloth wipe and a liner in there. So when I'm actually changing diapers, I don't have to reach for a million things. Pretty much everything is set up for me already. Um... Also, keep a uh, drip towel close by, some type of towel when pumping. Because um, when I pump milk, I don't know how, but I always end up with like this ring around the outside of the um, flange, I guess is what it's called. <clears throat> and when I take it off, when I take the cup off, the milk just like drips everywhere. So if you're pumping, make sure to keep something close by so that you can clean up um, any drips or anything like that. Um... Other than that, anyone who's just recently had a baby, um, you're going to get lots of crazy advice. There's going to be a lot of people who are going to try to push their beliefs on you. Just stand firm in what you believe. I personally am the type of person where um, my baby and her needs come before my own convenience. Um, so I wouldn't allow anyone to force me to give her a pacifier or anything like that. I didn't want anything to interfere with her breastfeeding. Um... So just stay firm and they don't really mean harm. And it's crazy because sometimes it's the person who doesn't even have kids who has the best advice. Let them tell it. But just be uh, kind but firm. <coughs> and don't leave your baby until you're ready to. Don't let anyone pressure you into doing that. So um, I'm getting close to 20 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. But I'll let you guys see Pink one more time. I can't believe she slept through this whole video. 
But um, it's good talking with all of you guys. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to put them in the box below. And take it easy, Lemon Squeezies. Bye.